There's a really amazing study about to come out. It's going to be presented at the American Association of Cancer Research meeting at the end of March, but there's some uh, advance uh, notice about this. And it comes from a young scientist named uh, Christine Sampson, who works at the uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston uh, as part of the um, uh, Sean Parker Institute for Cancer Immunotherapy. Uh, and basically what this shows is that patients who have melanoma and are receiving uh, uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor drugs are five times more likely to respond to the treatment if they have a high fiber diet and the high fiber diet uh, basically creates a diversity of microbes in their intestines and that seems to be the mechanism uh, for incredibly increasing the effectiveness of these drugs. Now you know the drugs uh, is a whole new class of immune therapy drugs and they're quite effective in a minority of patients. They're also very expensive um, and they can cause very serious side effects. So you don't want to take these unless there's a, a good likelihood that you're going to get a response out of it. But now we seem to have a handle on what makes people respond and not respond. It's the gut microbiome and so many things in medicine now are coming down to this very simple thing, uh, the c composition of the the bacteria that are in your intestines. This is like, um, of course it's been known for a hundred years that this is important, but now it's really getting uh, mainstream attention. So I think this is just fantastic news. And it also has some uh, profound implications for all of us. I want to talk about that. First of all, it was another uh, another finding was not surprisingly that if you had if the patients had had antibiotics um, in the period leading up to the taking the treatment, they had a reduced likelihood of a response. But then it's a real curveball in this study, and we haven't seen the full study yet. We're just getting press releases on it and so forth. But the the claim is that if the patients have taken probiotics in the period leading up to their treatment, they also have a diminished response to the treatment. This is absolutely counterintuitive, shocking, goes against what I said in my previous um, blog and, and uh, YouTube video about probiotics, but that's the nature of science, you know. It's always surprising and uh, we go with the evidence, not with our our wishes or our belief system. So we have to be very cautious now about the use of probiotic supplements. On the other hand, what did show this tremendous effect was simply eating foods that are high in fiber. So I'll make two suggestions here. One of them is to uh, alter your diet or persist with a diet that's high in fiber. That would be um, uh, wheat, uh, not wheat germ, but uh, wheat fiber or oat, fi oat fiber um, or berries, raspberries and blackberries in particular, high in fiber foods and um, other fruits and vegetables too, like lima beans ha are high in fiber. I say this with some caveats because about a hundred million people in the U.S. and equivalent numbers abroad are diabetic or pre-diabetic. So <clears throat> since the the incidence of diabetes is e escalating tremendously in uh, in countries that where people eat a lot of junk food. Especially, um, you can't just assume that the that eating fruit, unlimited fruits and vegetables or potatoes, are not going to raise is not going to raise your blood sugar. It very well might, and then that would be counterproductive. So uh, things like um, uh, wheat fiber and oat fiber. Uh, have almost no negative effect on your blood sugar. The other thing is that um, you could make the crackers that I wrote about, the Ralph's Superior um, Seed Crackers, because into that I always put my um, 
my wheat bran, and I also put psyllium husks. These are two, two items that are you know, tremendous in terms of helping your digestion and also uh, would work in terms of providing the fiber that the, that the bacteria need in order to grow and to have a diverse population. Uh, I've also picked up some uh, oat fiber. It's a different kind of fiber than the wheat fiber. Um, that's the soluble kind versus the insoluble kind. But the press release didn't say which kind of fiber was the most beneficial. So I'll cover the waterfront and do both of those. So when you do your seed crackers, uh, as per my other uh, blog and video, be sure to pick up some oat fiber and add that in as well. And by the way, the cost of that, it's so ridiculously cheap. I think I paid a big bag of it. I think I paid <laughs> under a dollar for it. So we're talking here about very economical things that you can do to improve your immune system. Um, I, I would say that, you know, We've had a big, a big issue with the, as I say, with the cost of these immune checkpoint drugs, the toxicity of them. You don't want to take these if it's not going to work, but wow, I mean, what an amazing advance this is going to be. If we can reproduce this clinically, you know, in the human, human patients, we're going to just see just tremendous increase in the effectiveness of these drugs and of immune therapy in general. So till next time, and I'll be having updates on this story uh, as we go along, for Moss Reports, this is Ralph Moss. <music>